Welcome back. So in the last episode, I realized that I didn't actually explain why we were doing mesh loops like this. The key idea behind these uh, loops is that these are the places where the bone weights radically shift. So what we're doing is we're laying out uh, with the intention of bone animations later on. We're laying it out right now. The only spots where bone animations aren't our primary concern are here because we're not going to have any bone animations there, and here, whatever we end up doing on the backside. Um, and those two areas aren't going to have, uh, we're not going to worry about bone animations so much as just uh, having the proper shape. So let's go ahead and start to fill these in. Is that a five? I think that's a five, and I didn't even notice it is. No, it's a four. I told you that it had too much density to it anyway. Um, so let's fill that in. All right, and uh, we don't need that, so get rid of it. And we have a lot of options here. I think we're just going to go ahead and do it the standard way and wrap it all the way around. Now I've seen some real pros that can do this lickety split, uh, and they have, you know, special libraries and stuff that help them do it. But I find that um, I need to do it by hand because otherwise I lose track of what's going on. So uh, you'll have to pardon me doing this stuff by hand. All right, so here we have a situation where we don't have enough density, so we're going to go ahead and add a line. Uh, we need more density right there. So we're going to put war in. Great part about modeling is you can add in whatever density you need. Just works. And this line here is actually just going to come up the back, and it's going to be the outside of the shoulder blade, like this. Except for, uh, for some reason, I brought them way far forward. And these have to be further back. And then they all have to be further in. These guys especially. Further in and back. That's more like it. So we're currently shaping these to be uh, the proper spine look so that when we add a subsurface, uh, they will automatically form the spinal divot. I may actually need even another. Yeah, I do. Oh, well, it's easy to add however many as we need. Um, there we go. Just start filling them in. Alright, so our back is basically done. Merges into the neck right here. But you can see that these are too wide, so we bring them over and bring them back. And then these guys here. And we're going to need to modify this considerably just due to the fact that our spine and shoulder, our back and our shoulder, uh, interact in a rather unique way. So we've got a lot of options there, but we're not ready to tackle that yet. We may not even get that far by the end of the episode. Uh, we're going to go ahead and work on this area down here. And uh, we have a couple of problems here in terms of how we're going to make this look. Uh, and that's th this is a situation where I used to get stuck all the time because it's hard to know how to connect around the hip without just cramming everything around in a big loop. Um, and the way that it breaks down here in the crotch is always annoying because uh, uh, you don't want to have 8 million... Um, 8 million lines running through the crotch, it's just too many. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to split here, and we're going to focus on this line here, because this is the line that's the most important. It's the one that's going to be doing all of the creasing when we lift our legs sideways, uh, or forward for that matter. So we're just going to uh, move along it in standard format. And that means it's probably easiest to just extend up, like so, and connect.
And that leaves us with this here as a rather um, awkward uh, situation. And um, how we handle that is up to us. There's lots of options. But the easiest option is um, is to bring in a loop that comes around. So if you wanted to loop around with a loop, you just grab the loop's edges, and then you grab where you want it to go, and you just put a face in. That's the easiest way to do it. And then you can add in however much detail you need like this and then of course you can feel free to merge. Do we want to merge that? Probably. If not I can always rip it later. And uh, then you have this situation which is just a very simple Now that may look pretty low poly, but you actually don't need that much complexity on the top of the hip. It, there's not much complexity there, so it doesn't really matter. I know there's actually a tool to just connect face loops. I didn't use it because I wasn't thinking. Because this is just a straight up connection. Just. Wow, that ended up wrong, didn't it? Let's try that again. All right, so we have to actually modify this because we're going to have to create the bottom of the butt. And let's just drag this stuff down a little bit. Scale Z0, there we go. So creating the butt is just a matter of putting a loop around the base and then filling in this area with complexity. As it turns out, we have something that's already waiting to be a loop around the base, so we'll just use it. Um, and the easiest way to do that is to actually extend these guys up and then connect it all, like so. And then you can just take this guy and this guy and merge them. And then you can fill this area in however you would prefer. Uh, generally speaking, I start from the center just because I can see what's going on that way. And so I'll grab these guys here. And that might be too low density. I think I might need one more. Well, we can add another one in a minute here. Sorry about keeping, I keep on changing the view wrong, and that's not, that's just because I'm, uh, I keep hitting one instead of control one. Yeah, it's not every day you get to see someone model a butt. Now this character is, uh, this is going to be the skin base, uh, so that means that this character isn't going to be wearing any clothes. And while they're not going to have any genitalia or anything, uh, it's important to have the basic shape right, which is why we are putting a crease in. Now I'm not too happy about the way the crotch is going, but it should be functional, so we're going to leave it that way. Uh, one of the reasons I don't care that much is because the crotch is going to be um, normally going to be completely replaced by our um, method of uh, uh, clothes creation. So unless the character is actually running around naked, they're going to have a different crotch. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about it. All right, so we've got a situation here where we have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so we can actually add in another loop here. We might as well. We don't actually need it in terms of the hip, but it's not a whole lot of complexity and it adds a lot of freedom here in order to create whatever we would like. There you go. And I guess that's probably enough density. I don't think I need any more density than that. Um, because keep in mind that we'll be adding in a subsurface modifier like this. Um, and that will create all of the complexity we need. Uh, although, as I mentioned, the crotch is not not the most fantastic. Does this go around to the... Well, whatever, we can fix it later if we need to. Alright, so with most of this body done, uh, obviously we haven't done any of the shaping yet. I've been eyeballing it this whole time, so the character's not, um, not the most human-looking character. They're kind of a blob with the right basic features. 
but we're going to stop here for today and tomorrow I'm going to go ahead and connect up this area which is definitely the most complicated area on the model. I may go ahead and think a little bit about what I want down here. The basic idea is I could add, uh, well, while well, you guys are here I might as well. You can add another loop here and that'll really sharpen it up and that'll mean we can bring these guys down. Like so. Uh, and then back here, this can be used to add a little bit more definition if we need it. Uh, more shouting people, great. All right, see you next time.